Hello, welcome to the Context Needed Podcast. My name's Kyle. Oh, fuck. Literally <laughs> within fucking seconds. You are a, Hello. You are a cretin. As usual, we are joined <laughs> with the trash man, Ryan, who has found his camera controls and is being a nonce. Oh, fuck. Turn the deep fried shit off. Stop. Please stop. I will find a picture of a balding man and put him in your place. <laughs> I will. We've already got a picture of a balding man right here. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Welcome now. <laughs> for, the audio li- for the audio listeners, he's basically got camera controls. He's zoomed right in, up the contrast, up the saturation, up... He basically just put every slider to full. <laughs> um, sadly, Ollie isn't able to join us today. Um, he's just unable to make it, so it's just going to be me and Ryan, who is, as usual, slouching and hiding behind his name. <laughs> I'm not. It's all right. That's all you can see. Oh my god, you are a cretin. You are a cretin. <laughs> you are such a knob. <laughs> I'm still behind the name. Am I still behind? I'm, I'm... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fall off your chair, then. No, I've, I've got, I was doing like the the thing on it, and it just uh, just went a bit too far back. Fair enough. Well, how can, you, you been? can you can you see me now? We can see you now. How have you been? Yeah, I'm alright. S- still here. Still, unfortunately, still installing and uninstalling Tinder. <laughs> right, you are, boys. <laughs> It's the, it's the cycle. I like, do you know what the thing is? Is I match people, but I'm kind of just sitting there and I look at them and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just like just can't be bothered. I literally just don't have like I can't even put the effort into myself. So why would I put effort into talking to so many unbearable <laughs> places? I can't even do self improvement, let alone you improvement. <laughs> I can't do anything at the moment because we're stuck inside. Oh well, yeah, there is that. That's mm. pretty shitty. It's I mean, sucked. and that is like the entirety of like the self improvement I actually want to take part in at the moment. Is is physical self improvement? Apart from the one arm. Well, yeah. I mean, like, look at it. <laughs> look at the right arm compared to the left arm. Left arm. There's nothing there, man. <laughs> I I have I still. I, 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 do, admit, I do kind I've, of need to um say because like I've found a lot of people found this weird so. You are right-handed to like right and all mouse and everything like that, but also yeah. for uh, cultured times. So are you right-handed for that as well? I am, but I do. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to experience the uh, the, <laughs> the, the other hand, the stranger, <laughs> <laughs> the stranger. That see, reach rad feeling. See, I'm right-handed for pretty much everything apart from that I know why you've just accustomed yourself to this <laughs> <laughs> no because even, even before even before it was using my phone or anything like that before, before I had anything for influence while I was doing that stuff when it was just all up here <laughs> I've I've got a feeling originally I probably was left handed and left footed. And it kinda so just got gimped. It kinda just got forced out of me. Because I will kick a football with because my Because of left. the regime. <laughs> the regime. <laughs> the secret police known as my You boy <laughs> You like, must be right handed. <laughs> so I, I I'll kick a football with my left foot. That will still always be my lead foot with kicking a football. I don't play football. Don't that, back, back from when I did, like when I was a kid, because every kid did it at some point kind of thing. Or at least when I was younger. I mean, you are fucking well, Zoom, yeah. like Zoom face. I Yeah, like, no, we, we did play football. I was never any good at it. No. I just I just volleyed it and hoped something good happened. Everyone always <laughs> bullied me about being shit at football, so I just didn't, didn't play it with them because they were bullies. Fuck them. You're not good at this game. We're going to take the piss out of you, but we need people to play, so we should really help him and make him better. <laughs> I'm just looking for that gas mask now. I'm sorry. 
Are you are you seriously just trying to buy a gas mask while on stream? <laughs> I, I want it. I honestly want that. I want that gas mask. It's such a nice gas mask. How much are they? Well, I just saw one for one hundred twenty-five dollars on American eBay. I'm trying to find one on the UK eBay, but I'm only finding the MSA Advantage, which is not what I'm after. I'm gonna have a look on their website. I want to see what other ones they do. Well, with your with your new your new favorite thing, you're definitely gonna need a gas mask where you want to go now. Because Ryan, oh, has... <laughs> I don't, don't want to go. Well, <laughs> it would I be do. it would be it would I'd, be fucking awesome. I'd love, I'd, to, I'd love go. to go there. My cousin. I watched gone. a video of a guy. Who, I watched a video of a guy who went there. I watched it before, and I was like, "Holy shit! I forgot about this video." Like you know when you forget about a video, but you can rewatch it. Yeah, and it's just. Uh, yeah, my, it looks so, like such a vibe. So Ryan started watching. Is it, is it Chernobyl or Chernobyl? Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Okay. Because well, I always that's get, how I pronounce there's, it. There's, 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 I've heard could both, be wrong. I've heard both pronunciations yeah. of sh with like like an s sound and ch. Potato, potato. So you you started watching that, and it's been one. I that finished been, watching it. In a you day. finished watching it. I finished watching it a day. It was fucking brilliant. Yeah, I've been like, meaning to watch really it. How, how long is it? It is a mini series, so it's only five episodes, and they're all ranging from forty to an hour, forty minutes to an hour. So basically, at most five hours. Yeah, pretty much. That's not too bad. Yeah, pretty I've been meaning much. to watch it for for quite some time because I've heard a lot of good stuff about it, and it's like it I is said, very good. My my cousin went to. Chernobyl. She went. She got to go to the safe zone on like a holiday, and she she does all that stuff on her. You holidays. can go. You can go to the reactor because you actually take in less uh, radiation, like right next to the re- reactor. Now it's got the big housing they put over in 2016, 2017. You can go there, um, and you actually take in less than you would in Pripyat, I think, yeah. or in certain areas in Pripyat. Pripyat is where I'd like to go and see, though. Like, I'd love to go and see, obviously, the uh, the the I'm guessing it, uh, and the swimming pool and stuff. Yeah, I'm, but I'm, they're out of their thing now. They've been cornered off. Yeah, I'm guessing the reason for that is because of the way Fallout works. Obviously, it's probably just it's probably settled in those areas, and that's why it's more. Yeah, dangerous it, well, in and areas. it's and it's somewhere it's not easier for them to turn over the dirt. So, like, obviously on. The entirety of the land, what they had to do is like they did in Japan with Fukushima, is they have to basically go in there, dig 10 feet down, and then just flip the soil. So yeah. it's like buried. Um, what, but I mean, like. Does it does it just stay in the ground then and just slowly, like, fade away? Dissipates, dissipate, basically. It, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's radiation's always going to be there, but it's just got to dissipate. It's got to, like, um, kind of settle itself out. Basically, yeah. I'm, yeah I watched, um, don't quote me on all this, but I watched abroad in Japan's video where he was driving through where that yeah. happened, and you can see where they're literally just using these machines that just they just do it in chunks, don't they? They just dig it up in well, chunks. in Japan. What they were doing there as well is they were digging it up and then they were carting it off. So they've got like one place where they've literally just got piles and piles of radioactive. Um, it's here. Obviously, it's not going to be as. I don't think it's as bad. It's bad, but like obviously, when you're carting it off in the dirt, the radiation's not as much because it's not directly radioactive materials such yeah. as you know graphite, the graphite rods and stuff that came out yeah. of the um, of the reactors. Well, you, I don't think there wasn't an explosion at Fukushima either. It was just a meltdown. Yeah, it just, whereas... just kind of went. It just kind of went. Not. I'm fucking done. I think. Yeah, well, that's because it was obviously because it's a modern uh, reactor as well. It had proper shutdown and everything like that. Obviously, with the RBMK reactors, they had that major flaw, um, which was obviously came from the whole entire. See, I don't, I don't know the story. I don't know. So I I have no idea. the The only stuff I know about nuclear reactors is they give us power, and you need to keep them cool. And that they can go tits up. That's about yes. all I know about nuclear reactors. So basically, for the way that the RM, RBM, is it RBMK or RMBK, I think it's RBMK reactors, the Russian ones, worked, is you have your reactor, 
and you have your um, two, three, five depleted uranium they used because mm-hmm. it's cheaper. Uh, they have carbon rods, which are basically help keep the reaction going. They make the reaction faster. Yeah. Um, they're the carbon. I forgot what they called them carbon control rods. Yeah. And then they had they have boron control rods, which basically they slow, they stop the reaction. So it's basically so it can big, like ease them in bit by bit, depending on how much they need. And it's this big game of easing and teasing each of these things to keep yeah. it at a level pace where it's got a certain amount of reactivity, causing the reaction and then getting the the, the fission of no fusion, and then the uh, oh no, is it fission? I think it's fission because it's splitting. I think it's fission. Fission if it's splitting. It's fission. Yeah. Fission ones are ones we use because they all split things. There are fusion reactors, but they work differently. They're about fusing atoms together. Yeah. Um, so basically doing that, and uh, the way they run it is you just balancing it all here and there, and they were doing a test, and they'd not done the test properly. They'd got people who were under-trained and weren't fully technically there on the system the guy who was managing it and the like the big the kind of commissioner of the power plant as well and like the head engineer were all already after um promotions basically they were they already had like a set regime and fit something they wanted to get done yeah they didn't care what they had to do to get it done so basically, they go ahead and do this, even though they've not properly done all the preparation for it. So basically, they... like every software push from any IT company, they just ignore doing testing and yes. shit like that. <laughs> well, this is a test they were probably meant to have done before they put the reactors in. Mm. Um, but basically, so they, they, they go ahead and do it. They drop the power to the level they want to drop it to. But because they're not properly done it they, they'd not got in clear instructions these new guys who are doing it it just drops even more because the reactions just stop it and it stalls and it gets to like zero yeah so he's like oh start putting more rods in so they start putting more rods in and like they've turned off the pumps and the fans and stuff at this point as well and because the, the whole thing was to test like if it could basically reboot itself yeah um and then it starts skyrocketing so the reaction starts going way up, and they're like, shit. Um, this is not what we expected. This is not what we expected. And then they're like, do an emergency shutdown. So they, they go to press the emergency shutdown button. But for saving price, with the boron control rods, there's a, they were carbon tipped. So yeah, basically, as soon as those carbon tips touch the the reaction and go into the reactor, boom! It starts going even higher because basically- the one thing that they need to use to slow it down has a tip of the stuff that makes it speeds heavier. It up. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so fucking boom! They just fucking the the engineer. There was a, there was an engineer. He was fried. He was hmm. fucking fried from the get-go. He was stood right above the reactor, in the reactor hall, at the time they were doing this. And there was two guys in the pump poles. They didn't even know they were doing the test. So those guys, those guys get blown to pieces, basically. They're just they gone. Get fucking, Atomized. They're, like, they're, they're there. They're just basically fucking burnt to shit with radiation. They're just cooked, basically. Basically. So that fucking blows up. Takes up, takes out the roof. The head engineer who's running the thing just, just like, no, it's not blown up the roof. Not actually looked at the roof. He goes, it's not blown up the roof. Then the, uh, they bring in the day staff and they're all basically like, oh, it's just a fire on the roof. Just a fire on the roof. Fire a fire on the roof arrived. of this nuclear reactor should cause a bit more concern. The firefighters arrive. Bear in mind, there was a huge explosion as well, and it's like they just completely like. It's Russia. To... It's it's Russia. I've got a feeling they hear explosions a lot for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ukraine. It's Ukraine. Oh, it was, Ukraine. It was sorry. Part of the. It was part of the USSR. 
Oh, right. Um, basically, that, ex- so that explodes, taking off the whole roof. Uh, and they're like, oh, it's just a fire. And the thing, firefighters arrive. First thing that, well, I don't know if this actually happened in real life, but the first thing that happened is one firefighter in the show picks up a piece of the carbon control rod, not knowing what it is. He goes, this is strange. This doesn't look like concrete or anything. And he drops it and his hand burns, but they're all wearing gloves and stuff. And he takes his hand glove off his hand and he's just fucking just torn like a holes in his hand. Yeah, because it's it's the radiation that's just microwaved him. That's why yeah, it's burnt. Yeah, basically. Mixed. Radiation uh, burn. Yeah, it just goes straight through everything. Yeah, it doesn't give a shit. And there's, there's this other character who is uh, a firefighter. And he's like, they go, you need to get on the roof to get rid of this fire. And he's like, uh, <laughs> uh okay. <Nope. laughs> like, but of course, just ends up going up there and doing it. I think all the firefighters died within the weeks uh, uh, of that. Yeah. Um, they were then like, great, we've put out the fire after they started dropping boron clay and sand on it. But it was still getting hotter and stuff. Yeah, the, the, I'm guessing the reaction was still tailing over. The reaction still, the, the reaction's still happening. They've just got rid of the fire at this point, so it's still hot. Yeah. There's actually a image called Elephant's Foot. I've seen yeah, that. The Elephant's Foot. It, that, yeah. that thing's impossible to look at. If you physically can't look at it, can you? The only way they got the picture well, was through um, like mirrors. Was it? I think. You no, you you can look at it. You just literally can't be in the same room as it for over a certain amount of time because that is still possibly one of the most radioactive places and things in the world. In the world, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like in and this was like the first instance of it in a non-controlled environment. I'm pretty sure because they yeah. do do tests where they make it on purpose. Yeah. Um, well, that- it's understandable in a controlled environment making those kinds of things because it's you're able to test yeah. it in a specific control way. That's the way. idea, isn't it? Yeah. But like so. Yeah, they basically the one firefighter. He goes through this whole story about this one firefighter. I won't go into the story of that though. Yeah. Then they get to this point, and they're basically it's melting through the ground, and they're like, "Oh, it's fine." But then, in the in the show, they have, and it says at the end, they have this one female character who represents the scientists who actually worked with. Um, uh, oh, he's getting the big second. guns out. He's getting the big guns out. He's typing it up to find out. <laughs> Valery Legosov, who is the main scientist, who basically like he gets the call from uh, Boris Sherbina, who is the uh, he's a Soviet politician who actually was working with him. They're, they're the two kind of like main characters in the show who yeah. work together regarding you know clearing this shit up. Um, he goes like, he goes, yeah, this thing. And basically the first thing um, this guy says is, yo, why the fuck are we not evacuating these people? It's like, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. So he goes there and then he goes into this big meeting. They've got Gorbachev, the current leader of the uh, Soviet party at the time. Yeah. Probably one of the most sane leaders of the Communist Party you've actually had because he's done <laughs> interviews since. And I've seen interviews of him and he's actually like just really clued up because he's just going like, we're still at it. Like he's like, Russia and America are still at it and they need to stop. <laughs> he's just like, we need to fucking stop. But it's a, anyway. it's, it's a, it's a, my dick's bigger than yours competition at the moment. And it's just, it no, I, I don't care. You both yeah. have big dicks. It's fine. I don't need to know yeah. the minutiae of your big dicks. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this guy is basically the key scientist. And then the, all the other scientists go, well, because they think there's these cooling tanks or these reserve tanks underneath, but they think they're empty. But then they go, wait, weren't they trying to pump water into the reactor, which isn't there? So basically all that was spilling back into the thing. And you've also had all the um, uh, firefighters Putting out a fire with water, trying to. And they're like, oh shit. So like all these tanks are actually full of water. So if this thing melts through the concrete, which would have been like six weeks it had done it in, it would have literally just 
blown up and it would have been like a fucking 40 megaton bomb. Yeah, because it would have um, now, it would have reacted to the water, wouldn't it? Yeah, it just instantly evaporating it. Causing fucking pressure. Sending this, yeah. sending this radiation everywhere. It basically, megaton- it basically would it would have basically created a, like a hydrogen bomb. It oh, it would. It would have been bigger than Hiroshima and thing, yeah, I think they were saying. Well, I think or the like largest one we've had, the them. largest bomb that's been used and tested in the world, I think, is the SAR bomb, which I think is a hydrogen bomb. Um, yeah. I don't remember how large that was. Let me have a look. The SAR bomb. Uh, SAR bomb. SAR bomb. Uh, three, over 3,000 times as destructive as the bombs used to destroy Hiroshima. Yeah, it's 50 megatons of TNT. Yeah, um, 20, this, this... 20, 210 petajoules of energy. So yeah, yeah that's it's about the same as the SAR bomb. This should have been, been that, and then fucking just yeeting out all the radioactive material as well, further, yeah. which would have taken out most of the Ukraine uh, and I think Belarus as well. It would have taken out a massive portion of like it would have that taken out. Well, it, it, it there was already like the the thing that hit you the most is uh, the fact that um, people in East and West Germany were telling their kids they couldn't go outside and play, like they'd already put rules in because of this radiation cloud that had come across from the explosion Yeah. before they'd uh, taken people out of Pripyat. People yeah. were still in Pripyat. And there's uh, there was a group of people who actually did, like, they, I don't know whether the characters they, like, they said... Like the characters' names and stuff were people's actual names, but there was a group of people who went to stand on a railway bridge to watch it. None of them survived because they no. were closer to the thing. They all they all died of radiation poisoning. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting I'm going backwards and forwards in the story here. So this, I think I think that's that's more than enough to make me go watch it at the end of the day. Like I don't want. They send like three guys down. Like there's obviously they filled those tanks up full of water. They send three guys down there to unthing and they survived these fuckers survived they were just like wading about in radioactive water and i think two of them are still alive today Jesus like God. right under the reactor i think that's the craziest thing is some of some of these people actually it's, did survive it it's weird the way that our bodies react to radio radiation i mean if you think about it a lot of the treatment treatments we have for a lot of problems is done by radiation. Chemotherapy is basically mm. just fucking with your DNA and radiation. It's just pouring radiation through your body. You get radiotherapy, which is just rather than putting strong radiation through your entire body, they just have multiple points of low level stuff so that then when it crosses over at the certain area of the cancer, that's when the radiation is strongest. So like yeah. how and it it can mess people up. Chemotherapy fucks people up. I mean, I've seen no, oh, yeah, my I've, my uncle was going through chemo. It's it's it it's fucking painful to see. I I think, and it's one of those things where oh, you see, it's when like, you see people who have got cancer and they're going through chemo, it it fucking well, you're just basically trying to poison a certain part in the body, but it's like it just fucks people up. Their immune well, system is yeah. really dragging. Well, it's, it's, it's because they can't target that certain point. They have to poison the entire body, mm. and that's why chemotherapy is so fucking dangerous. I mean, at the end of the day, like I'm not trying to say I'm a doctor, I'm not trying to say I'm a scientist, and I don't know the full minutiae of how it works, and I understand chemotherapy is saving so many people. Many lives, yeah. And I'm not trying to say we should stop it, I'm not that kind of person that's like that. It's great what it can do, but the effects it has on people while it's happening to them, it's, it's scary to see, because you're literally, you basically, from the looks of it, it looks like you are killing the person to to save them. Kind of thing. Well, the there was some there's some parts in this show where it was actually like I was a bit like this is like tricky to watch, mm. like just the people like who like the firefighters they show how they deteriorate with the radiation and they just they don't look they don't look human again they look like a corpse just a, yeah. a walking corpse. What's that? Everyone, it's, um, it's scary. Loads of people loves the Fallout series and seems to think um, nuclear wasteland would be like this fun quirky place. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be the fun guy Mutants. growing the third arm. It no, wouldn't maybe. be the it wouldn't be the cool ghouls or anything like that. No, it would just ghouls, be... yeah, ghouls are they wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. 
it would just, just be you. death. That is it. That is all there would be. <laughs> no like, lead-lined it, it, fridge will save you. <laughs> they're like, oh, but you like they they they'll, they'll, they'll mu- people do mutate from this, but they don't mutate like become super strong mutants. No, they mutate and they are more susceptible ca- to cancer, so they're more likely to get cancer. The thing they I is, think be- someone... is more likely to be like child death rates go up because obviously yeah. all your children are radiation think... poisoned. Someone did like the maths or the science behind it because obviously with mutation in that it's dependent on the radiation I think it's targeted from what I remember reading but like he went okay well let's even go to the fact if it was radiation that would cause randomised mutations let's look at it that way oh my god you just froze you just went all roboty for me oh yeah it looks like I did just do that I do apologise um but no, so it was. Um, he was looking at basically, obviously, ran- radiation from certain things will always target like certain areas of mutation. So he's like, okay, well, let's have a look at it as if it was randomized mutations from radiation. And what are the chances of a ghoul happening or a super mutant happening? Because he just then breaks down a mutation would be uh, differences in your DNA, and we have this much in the string of our DNA, and these tweaks here would do this and stuff. It's like, I think I remember hearing at one point, it was like, yeah, we have, we share like, I think a high percentage of our DNA with a banana. Like there, what's the, uh, we would literally be walking bananas. Difference human and human banana. Here we go. About 60% of our genes have a recognizable counterpart in the banana genome. So, that's how weird DNA is, where literally, like, 1% change will completely change every aspect of the human race kind of thing, from what I remember reading. And I remember, um, I was in a, I was, it was a, you know when you go for, like, drinks after work, those dark times, those times before before the end days yeah before the end days where you could go to the pub after work with friends and there was a guy who i worked with who was vegan gluten-free he was he was the full works of that kind of life Mm. and there was someone who this was all from the studio i worked at and one of the girlfriends of one of the guys who worked at the studio she worked i can't remember if she ever worked in this lab or she knew someone that worked in this lab that did um, testing on, it was like gerbils and things like that. Yeah. Um, And he got on his high horse about, but while we're testing on gerbils, it's completely different DNA. And I remember, it was like, yeah, but you got to remember, there's not that much difference between our DNA to animals. And he's like, Oh, but it's still these things can still have massive differentiating effects on things. It was just like, and that, I think that's when I pulled up that and I went, yeah, but we share six percent DNA with ban- bananas, so they have to do the testing Start somewhere. Start testing on bananas. <laughs> it's like, well, are you going to volunteer to get tested on? That that was, I think that was where we went to next. Where it's just like, well, okay, well, what about human testing then? So like, yeah, we should be doing that. It's like, okay, so how many people are you happy to have die? testing um these these drugs oh no one should die it's like well then there's no testing because that's what happens when you test things that's why we test on animals as as i've mm. i completely i've understand got a, testing I've got a anim- uh, oh god sorry uh, i've got a fix for that though what nonsense <laughs> no because that would that's cruel the it's as as weird as this argument is Am I wrong? That, that would be considered torture. We and just need to reevaluate our human rights. That's all I'm saying. I've always been of the mindset where even prisoners, as horrible as they should be, should still have basic human rights. Yeah, if you've stolen a Snickers from the corner shop, if no, you've no, raped even, millions of, even, if you've raped loads of little kids, mate, all the, way, all, the way up to, all the way up to murders and killers and stuff like that, all. all all humans across the entirety of the fucking world should have basic human rights. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying that punishments 
shouldn't be changed for certain things. Prolific rapists and child rapists and all that kind of stuff should be castrated. Just chop the dick off. Don't even castrate him. Just chop the dick right castrated off. Castrated or eunuch or whatever. That's that's that. If it was proven that they are repeat offenders and prolific repeat offenders, that should happen in my opinion. And now I'm not saying we should just do it while they're awake. It should be a proper procedure of they go to sleep, gets removed. Oh no, I used too much sleeping drug. <laughs> they are now dead. <laughs> Like, Whatever shall we do? Oh. And like it was it, things like capital punishment for like um things like that. that's one that always gets people on high horses with capital punishment and stuff. Yeah, it does my nut in, and I'm just like, bro. The thing is, if you've the thing is, is you've we've got you've got the first thing you've got to do is make sure you don't have the flaws in your legal system. Yeah, we've like we spoke about the other week. We have the flaws in our legal system, so bringing back capital punishment is not viable no. until you can until we can say we are not going to fuck up like they fucked up with the lad who got accused of rape and it turned out she was just begging for sex constantly you know plenty of there's plenty of people who have gone down for crimes they did not commit yeah and until you can prove that the legal system is completely valid which parts of it are parts of it aren't i mean I think, it, 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 and you'll never have that. You'll never, never no. have that in any country. And it, and it's, it, it's just the way that governments work, and the way it's that not even it's not even work. the way that governments work. It's the way that the the policing and the law system works. And that's the thing, though. The, the law thing. system's all controlled by government. Do you know what I mean? So it, the the only way you could have a perfect like from my opinion the only way you could have that perfect thing is if i was the dictator of the world because that's my opinion do you know what i mean that's the only way you'd have that perfect thing and even then it's not the perfect situation to you do you know what i mean and you'll never have the perfect system with democracy you'll have the best for the majority but you won't have but if it was in a dictator standpoint then all you've got is the best for the dictator because that's how they yeah they that's what use, i mean that's what i mean but like the, With... the the thing is is we we might have slight differences in our perfect yeah law system like you say you'd rather keep you'd rather give all prisoners a right to think every if every, I, every if, human if should got, have basic human rights in my yeah opinion. but if like in my opinion if they are definitely convicted and we know they are a child molester or rapist or murderer we'd you know block them up kill them just kill them you know that's my opinion being different so like like what i'm saying is is you'll never have that kind of not not everyone will always agree no the thing i think the thing is when it comes to like capital punishment the only way it should ever work is if it is literally a hundred percent unequivocal Hard evidence that you froze. <laughs> did I freeze again? <laughs> yeah, you froze. I don't know. It's not my side because I'm not dropping any. Frames. Capital punishment. If somebody's got, if somebody hosting a podcast has got bad internet, we should castrate them. <laughs> it's not me because I've not dropped frames. It's you, dude. Oh, it's me. <laughs> yes, it's you. What's going on? It's like Smith downloading. But like, so the only way I can see it working is if it's like a hundred percent unequivocal hard evidence. That it mm. is that person. That's the yeah. only way that can work. Because, I mean, I was watching... Um, it was a documentary about, I think, like, Death Row. And, yes, the numbers are low of what they found to be people that didn't deserve the chair because they didn't actually do it or whatever. But it's like, yeah, but they're the numbers of what's been found out. Usually when someone goes down for that stuff and they are then put to the syringe or whatever it is they use to capital do the do the punishment mm. now well the case is closed no one's looking at it anymore but there's a lot it of them it's very where unlikely it's going to yeah, get reopened yeah but yeah. there's a lot of them in there where you could probably look through like say say you look through like 20 cases of people that are on death row you could look at the way the case is going to be like 
okay, yeah, bad shit happened. It looks like it's this person. But it wouldn't... It's not something where you could say 100%. Definitely. It's like it, it 70%. It depends on the detective as well. It depends on your the police force, the detective, you know, whoever was working on that. It's There's going to be variants. That is the, the... Well, that is the main thing with humans is there'll all be always be variation the only way you could have it be perfect is if you had a robot workforce doing it but even then robot workforces are susceptible to being hacked or robots make robots make mistakes the, as well yeah so i mean it's like it's it you are never gonna have that perfect law no. and i think it was something it made me think about was like there's the whole kgb they, like, they, they touch on the whole kgb spot part of uh russia in like hidden secrets and i've been watching a lot of these videos on youtube where they're all like um uh, wartime missions uh different kind of missions they did during the cold war as well yeah. and there you've was been on a, this you've been on a bit of a cold war binge haven't you really i've been on a cold war binge and i love it i love the cold war i think the cold war is such a like I don't love I it would, for what it was. Yeah, I, it would, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I love the Cold War. Like it's, a bit, it's a bit, you know. <laughs> I don't mean in that way. I mean in like you're in a, in interested in the Cold War. <laughs> I love it in a historical interest manner because it's so interesting the kind of things that were done back then. Um, because it and the people make it out like oh the good the good guys and the bad guys. It was Russia was the bad guys and America was the good guy. Uh, the There's good no guys. good guys or bad guys there in was, the war. There was no good guys or bad guys. Because both countries did equally as bad stuff, have both hidden as much stuff together. Oh, yeah. Like, people raise, like, oh, there's so much more stuff hidden by Russia. It's like, yeah, there's still stuff that's hidden which hasn't been, re like, released yet, where they don't tell people about it afterwards, because that was the nature of the USSR. Yeah. I mean, even but this America's day... America's got just as many... Just got yeah. just as many classified documents. I mean, what, it took... Figgy Snowden. Think, well, Snowden... It took what twenty was it twenty or thirty years before MK Ultra was um, declassified and leaked, and even then, it's still classified in portions. It, it, well, that's that's all down to protection of staff members, and I I kind of understand like yeah. their their point because these staff members like they do morally bad things, but they're only doing what they're told. Yeah, you know, they're only doing what the the governments ask them to do in a nature of protecting the country but that's um, that's that's why like i said earlier there are no good guys or bad guys in war yeah. even if you go yeah. to world it's war II, where we, even when you go to world war Two, where we had notorious um villain 101 hitler yes he was a bad guy but the atrocities that were performed by soldiers on both sides stand clear it, it the yeah all these people that were brought into the to do these fights, not all of them wanted to fucking fight, but they had to. They were they had to fight. It was a conscript. That's the way it worked. It was the better of it was the better of the two choices kind of situation, really, oh, isn't it? I'm I mean, not. I'm not. I'm not saying that Hitler should have won. Hell no. That needed to fucking. We're not end. defending that. But we're not I mean. defending that. Like yes, the right side in the way we see it won. Because it stopped mass genocide, it stopped mass alienation. Um, I mean, it stopped a lot of terrors from happening. But I mean, when you go and read and look at some of the the minute details and the minutia the... of what just soldiers would do on both sides, and every every there was no there was no good guys like in a individual kind of sense like yes there would have been a few good people yeah but in like a, a, a sense of armies there was no good army there was just a set of armies which were fighting for the better thing and i think it's, it's similar when people like there's people who sit there and they they um like don't get me wrong i think the communists and the communist um time frame is a very very interesting bit of history. It's very interesting history to look at. Yeah, especially after watching this Chernobyl, there's so much just his, there's so much good like interesting history to look at. Yeah, be it good or bad, because there's so many things horrific things that were done. 
but there's nowadays you've got two sides of the plate where they just like glorify and completely make like there's people like capitalism is the best it's like well no it isn't not 100 percent. there is there is no perfect um economic structure make structure They'll never, they'll never be a perf. They'll never be a perfect government. They'll never be a perfect economic structure because, in order to make, in order to have something work, something has to. In order to create, you have to lose. In order to gain, you have. Well, to and lose. it's as simple as saying it. It could be perfect to one person, but it might not be perfect to the other. Perfect is you can't throw around the word perfect. No. The, because the, people the, the best, are all different. Yeah, the best phrase I've ever heard when it comes to perfect is "perfect isn't a state." Perfect is a target that, no matter how hard you work towards, you will never reach, but you should always be reaching for. That's yeah. that's the definition of perfect in my mind. Because at the end of the day, if you went to say a hundred percent communist, everyone gets the same paycheck. That might be great for me because I might end up earning more money might be great for you because you might end up earning more money but some of my family members who are on really good wages because they've put in that hard graft would all of a sudden lose so much for all the hard work they've done in the way the problem with the way communism worked and was delivered was the fact that this was the case that all the normal people got paid the same thing. All the people up at the top of the communist thing were living the dream. They were getting paid more. You know, they they were. Uh, it's just how it's like. You could see it. Like they weren't starving. They weren't. They weren't suffering from the the famines. Mm. And I think this is the thing. There's 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 a certain selection of people who I somehow come across too often because <laughs> uh, I think a lot of them are in my age group and they are clearly need a few things tightening up in their their head at times because they are they're not the crazy. sharp they're not the sharpest bulb in the shed they, they, they really <laughs> fucking are because they they like they live and breathe they're like oh communism is the answer i'm like no the only reason you think communism is the answer is because you are lazy and you don't want to do work number two um, i think if communism that- was the answer you would you wouldn't be allowed to be lazy because you'd be being taken by the secret police and chucked in a fucking gulag you dickhead and they're like oh no that was just how communism was communism was put in these uh this one time it worked really well all these other times and i'm like show me a time communism yeah. wasn't a I've, dictatorship I've a, that just killed people i've got a feeling they're getting communism and socialism mixed and i see yes. that so much from both so sides much. i see that from people that want it get it mixed up and i see that from people that or yeah. against it, get it mixed I up. I just where... see that, I'm like... And it's like, I've had to explain so many times, and I'm literally going to pull up the definition of both of them. Let me ever a, get a... Oh, fuck, I don't want Inspector. Go away. Oh, God, what have I done? Exactly that. Communism. Okay, so, the definition of communism is a theory or system of social organisation in which all property is owned by the community and each person contributes and receives according to their ability and needs. Thus, usually meaning everyone owns everything and everyone earns equally. Yeah. I've got socialism already up. Socialism so uh, socialism is a particular political... Do you want me to read it? Because I've got it right here. <laughs> it's a political and economic theory of social organization which advocates that the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Policy or practice based on the political and economic theory of socialism. Uh, the rest of it's just all the Marxist stuff. And it's, it's like, not about Marxism. It's, it's like, that's, fuck off. that's basically, it's not saying everyone earns equal. That's not what it's saying. It's basically saying things like fabrication, engineering, and all those kinds of systems, like your public transports and your electronics and your your gas companies, that would all be owned by the community. The, that's the government, how, basically. The government, In the theory, the, the, yeah, the, the government is the community, so it's all us working together. Well, Rather than what we've 
privatizing it for, the for end, profits. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, but then it's one of those things where I I I love that idea, and I think it's a great idea. But the issue is, I can't trust our government enough to not fuck it up. I can't trust our government enough to try and make profit off it themselves. And it's not just that. You've also then got to think, is if all means of production is owned by the community, you're not going to have these really good individual businesses come around who make a specific product you know which you know the, if it was controlled by the community they may have never been given the go-ahead to go and create the product do you know what i mean yeah to just go i just want to go, te- like, just go and test some shit that's all i want to do no you're not allowed we're on a no, tight budget no, no. <laughs> yeah that's basically that's that's basically the problem there is you've got to get that balance now what you really want is you by the means of socialism Really, what we want to control is public transport. It's basically the services. That's what yeah. needs to be in a socialist Water, con- gas. Water, gas, electric, 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 and transport. Yeah. Logistics can still be private because that way then you get better rates between different logistics companies. Production mm-hmm. could still be private because then you can get, like you said, different things all these other well, it's how it's how your economy booms like during the war periods obviously they go we need a new gun go at it and you've got heckler and Kark, you've got oh yeah, you've got, all the, trials. And you've got all the companies going to make a gun and try and get the contract you've just reminded me about one of my favorite stories about one of those trials and it was when the, the british was when the british army was um, looking for their next sniper, and it's a story of the L ninety six. Yeah, the L ninety six. Yeah, yeah, and I know this. It was, <laughs> and it, it's. I love this story so much because it was Accuracy International, which was literally just a couple of dudes in a fucking couple shed, of dudes in the shed <laughs> made this rifle, and they went, "Fuck it, we'll submit it for testing," and they fucking won. And they were like, "What I the hell?" The video and it was just like. <laughs> They just won, and then there was like, right, well, we need, we want to send, um, want to send a general and someone from the government or whatever over to your facilities, so we can just check on how things are done and see, make sure everything is good. So there was like, fuck. They quickly rented a warehouse, rented it like you've got a couple of friends or they got like, a bunch a... of tools. They got all their tools and a few more tools, didn't they? They like, basically did they, them in the think, warehouse. Chuck they chucked the them in the warehouse, but they like they partitioned it off as if it was like, oh, this is the front warehouse area. Then we've got the fabrication back there. They basically partitioned off that, and they got all six rifles. I think they had out. In various in, like, states, different points, <laughs> and they got the fucking general stuff over to look, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we we, we don't need to have like an in depth tour. This looks like a really good setup you've got here. We just wanted to check, make sure you weren't just two dudes in a shed." <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not just two dudes in a shed. <laughs> but you know mean? what? That is act- that was actually one of the best snipers we've had, and I like it wasn't even just us who used it. The oh, Americans, I think the Americans, used it I think well. we still, I think we still use it as a sniper system. Well, for... we've we've upgraded it since. I mean, it's not the oh, same there's, fucking there's, gun that we started building back in the day. It, there's always like Mark One, Mark Two, Mark Three kind of thing. But I think for their long range sniper systems in those kinds of missions, I still think they use a variation of that rifle. Obviously, it is the, they, it's, a, it's a newer version. Yeah, yeah, it'll be like the A Three or whatever it is now. But um, uh, they will they will also have like designated marksman rifle where they'll probably use I don't know if it's like the SR twenty five or something like that that the Americans use I'm not sure but the, I know we use a lot of the American style um, modular if weapons. Yeah, if, if we go to uh, UK Army weapons, there's a wiki which tells you. Oh, I think we've looked at this before and it's amazing. Yeah, the list of equipment of the British Army. So we use the uh, as a sharpshooter rifle. We use the L twelve L one two nine A one. Ah, so yes, which is an American. Called, I'm actually on the army website, and they've got it all on there. 
So yeah. it's the L one one five A three now, rather than the L ninety six. There's well, there's a couple of versions. There's that, and then there's also the L one one eight A one. Yeah, Jesus Christ! Uh, it's an eight point five nine millimeter caliber rifle. Yeah, so I'm guessing that's what is that three oh eight? Uh. 338 um, 338 Lapua. Yeah, 338 Lapua. Uh, they, they, using that rifle, they actually got it, currently holds the record for the third longest recorded sniper shot in history at 2,475 uh, 2, meters. I watched an interview with that guy and uh, it's... Corporal, uh, Corporal of Horse uh, Craig Harrison. Yeah, I'm sure. It was him or someone else who's done one of these world record um, confirmed kills. And he did yeah. it on, I think it was like, um, I think it was fucking Lad Bible or something like that. Lad Bible have started like bouncing out doing a lot of stuff. And it was just an interview of him. And they were asking him some questions and they didn't do stupid questions. Like they were asking genuine questions, asking how, how did he feel when he got the awards and he was like I'm sure he was saying like he felt kind of empty he's like I'm giving I'm being given awards for taking Killing lives somebody. and he's like yeah okay I was out there my job was to protect my boys to protect the guys kind of thing and I was in a war but it still it messed with his mind basically how people are celebrating this Kind of thing. I think that w- that that specific like the award for getting the longest shot ever. It just seems a little bit. It seems like something that you'd see in a video game. It doesn't seem like something you'd really you should really. It's like a fucking Call of Duty emblem life. that pops up, long shot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think the, it, it's becoming a little bit too uh, normal to do something like that. When really you should really be like celebrating. Saving somebody's life. Yeah, those. Yes, two, doing those two, yeah. It should just be the whole out. thing. It should just be things like you getting those two shots, which were amazing shots, saved those guys that were in the line of fire. We're celebrating mm. that. That's, that's not what you should be celebrating, and rather than taking out one guy at two thousand something meters. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to downplay anything about like the end of the day was going to happen death's going to happen but the effect it has on the people is something that really needs to be looked at because i think when i was watching more of the PTSD, interview like he was, he was he was he was suicidal he um i think he went away on holiday from what i'm watching and he was he put the gun in his mouth he was literally about to shoot himself um, and I can't remember if he did, and it uh, like it didn't go off or something. Or I can't remember exactly because it was a while ago that I watched it. But his dog came in, and just like came and just cuddled up to him, and he basically said like, if if my dog wasn't there, he wouldn't be here now because he was he was literally about to to shoot himself because of the the agony that he was going through mentally after everything he'd been through. And that's the kind of shit that really needs needs support. And I've got a feeling there isn't enough support for mm. the, for the. But people he says that come here, it says here on the wiki. I don't know if this is all exact, but it's like uh, he after returning from Afghanistan in 2009, he developed PTSD and was discharged from the army in 2014. He has stated since that he joined the army when he was 16, and since all of this has happened, he just felt abandoned, uh, abandoned by his regiment. He's like, I spent 22 years loyal to that regiment, putting my life on the line, doing tours, and they just hung me out to dry. My trust in people, the armed forces, it's gone. Obviously, there's other people within the army who don't experience that, but I think it's something where it's like, there's clearly something needs to be... To yeah. be done, and I know they are doing stuff currently about it, but there is there's a lot. There's, there's people a lot of they, like he fucks with people. I mean, this yeah. guy's killed people. He's watched his friends die. He's probably seen fucking horrific shit. 
and it's just kind of it's it it sucks because we constantly there's constantly talk about how we should respect our armed forces and everyone everyone's quick to say I respect our armed forces and I I trust in our armed forces and all that stuff and I I respect them as well because they do shit that I never I know I'd never be able to do and I respect them for them putting their lives on the line for the shit they do. And I mean, you're not allowed a beard. I could never do it. I could never <laughs> do it, bro. No, I think I think you are now. now. After after um, after basic, and once you actually make it yeah. to your regiment, it's from what I remember reading, it's relaxed now. It's more down to, I think it's the platoon CO. Who I decides uh, it, and as long as it if, doesn't get in the way of your like tactical gear, I think. If if the call was made. If we were sat here now and World War Three broke out and the call was made, I'd 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 go and do it. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't shy away. If you know we were fighting off the next Nazis or something like that, you know, mm. I'd go and do it. But at the moment, I, it, we we what what's somebody in Afghanistan? Like obviously, yes, we've been attacked by terrorists, but that's only since we've been into Afghanistan and into Iraq and into Iran. It meddled in their affairs with the Americans. It's like it's, we don't, we never needed to be there. Well, so it's a case. The to- reason why it's such a difficult war to fight is it's not really a war. No, it's an insurgency. It's completely- you're never going to stop terrorism. No. I mean, terrorists. We we had the Irish. We had the. Well, it was not even just the Irish. It was it was the Northern Irish and the Irish. They were both acting in insurgencies and terrorism. They were both as bad as each other during that time. And so was the army. I mean, the army was did some awful things, absolutely disgusting things. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you know, we had to defend the freedom of the world because there was some tyrannical power, like Egg- Eggman becomes next Hitler or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I mean, like, do you know what, you know what I mean? Is like, if something like that did happen, which hopefully at this point in time, I hope would never happen. I, I, I would be. Willing to, you know, I, 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 I won't, I won't, I won't try and hide or run away from it. Yeah, I, I think I, I, at, you just wouldn't, at would this you, point really? in time, in the way the world's developed, the chances of something like that happening, in my opinion, are in, in, incredibly yeah. oh. slim. Just because, Stu- like, stupidly low. The 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 treaties that we have, obviously, there's NATO, there's. There's, there's. Well, there so... was treaties back in the day, mate. But the, no, I, I understand there were treaties yeah. back in the day, but it was, it was a different technology-wise. Whereas yeah. oh, in yeah. those days, it was more boots on the ground, tanks on the ground kind of scenario, and artillery in the back. Nowadays, it's just I will sit in this office in California and do a predator drone strike. We, we've this, this surveillance as well. People don't understand the the power of surveillance that there is with satellites and what the governments have got out there because they've have got you, stuff we still don't know about. Have you watched um, Jack Ryan? No, I haven't. So That's I've the wo- series with what's his name in it, isn't it? Yes, from, with uh, John Krasinski. Yeah. I've only watched the first season. I watched a little bit of the second season, but I was having a lot of changes happen, so I never got to around to finishing the rest of it. But there's, there's like a side story that happens alongside the first season about a guy who is a predator drone controller Mm. who literally sits in like a base in California and does surveillance using the predator drone and then they just get a green light or a red light to neutralize targets it's like he's neutralized the general last year yeah he's just Iraq and that that that's how scary like it is nowadays but it's just like He's literally sat thousands of fucking miles away using a fucking Xbox controller, pretty much probably, to just... They, they, they do. They For the drones, they used Xbox controllers. Yeah. So it's just like, that's where technology gets scary, where eventually it may just end up being people sitting at screens like they're playing fucking Call of Duty, taking out targets. It's a... Uh... What I uh, I take from stuff like that is, I like well last year sorry, they were, they obviously Trump pulled pulled the trigger, took out that general, 
don't get me wrong, this general sounded like a pretty pretty bad piece of work. Yeah. Whether it was justified or whatever, you know, it's not for me to... I just don't, I, what am I... What can I say? I'm not the president. <laughs> fucking impressive. It was impressive, the precision. Like you're saying, though, somebody fucking, fucking mile, hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away, takes this shot. Didn't even have to be in the same continent. No. Kills a guy. Um, but then everyone was like, oh, it's going to be World War Three. I'm sorry. Okay. The country, I can't remember if it was Syria, Iran, or Iraq. You, then they're not going to cause a world war. Then, they, like, they, they are not amounting to the power the German Reich was. They, they are not amounting to the power that Hitler had brought together in the, with the German people. You know, they weren't producing hundreds and thousands and millions of soldiers and tanks for a blitzkrieg to go across the country. Well, one, they couldn't do that without us spotting them first and just fucking predator drone striking all the tanks. Yeah. But it, it it's it it was it's a country that you you can't they would they would not be the cause of that war. China, Russia, or America, all three of them are those the countries that would be able to start a world war because they yeah. are big enough to do that. And the only country you really need to think about at the moment where they'd go into well you'd even think they might closely go into conflict is a world war is north korea because yeah. of just the high volatility of that situation and the fact that i don't think people understand this south korea and north korea are still at war oh yeah they're at war the war is not over no, it's, they a are still at war. It's, it's just a ceasefire it's not even it's not even an official ceasefire because i don't think the south koreans signed it if you're um... south korean I'm sure there is. I'm sure the original, the original one that they pulled together, the South Koreans didn't sign. North and I was South watching the thing. Korea. But if you're in South Korea or you're a South Korean uh, man, at least I don't know if they females have to do service. There is still uh, enlist, like enlistment and inscription. There is, there is, there is signatures do. on both sides for. Is a signature on both sides? The Korean now. Armistice Agreement. It was su- signed. By William K. Harrison on behalf of United Nations Command, um, Nam the Second for Korean's People Army, and oh wait, this is oh sorry, this is a completely different one. This is um, this is the war between Korea and China. Sorry, North and South Korea. Yeah, well, they're not China. Korea. Korea isn't at war with China anymore. It was before it became uh, North and South. Because obviously it's, uh, China is with they they work with South Korea because they have trains going up through China into Russia where they have camps. There's video footage of the places. Yeah, I can't find anything about the um the most recent ceasefire with them, but I know from, yes, Korea. From what I read, Korea still read, has um still has um service where they have to do two has, years you, of man. You have to go into service. You have to do two years of mandatory doctor. service. That's why it's it's funny when you watch um. I was watching a lot of esports things recently, and obviously Korea is a big esports um, country. And there was one brilliant one where it was a StarCraft Two tournament, and um, it was I think it was literally two Koreans who were in the finals, mm. and um, one of them, the guy who lost, got heavily taunted by the guy who won. Where the guy who won, as soon as he won, left his booth, went into the other guy's booth, and put the um, the military drabs on the guy. He put the military jacket over him. He put the military cap on him, basically saying, "Stop esports. Go do your service. You're done. You're retired." <laughs> I think that's incredibly cocky and stupid. See it is. They they. It's still a very volatile situation oh, yeah. there. That that peninsula is a very volatile, very volatile situation. And I mean, have you seen the fucking South Korean special forces? Oh lord, you would not mess with those men. <laughs> I haven't actually no. seen them. No, let's have a look. I'm gonna if you this. if you if you watch some of the footage of them, there they, there's a video of them doing um, uh, like uh, combat drills, like hand to hand combat. Mate, 
well, South like, um, Korea. Are the first a picture on their country. wiki is pretty damn like, uh, <laughs> like, what the hell? There's there's a part in the wiki that is literally just called Assassination Brigade. Me. I'm just gonna, and do you know what they do? You know the thing, do you know what? Right, the one thing, right, you've got to take from the South and North Korea war is okay. At the start of the war, the South was but a mere farming farmland. They're all farmers. Didn't really have any technical things down in the South. All up the North was the industrial and technological place, and That's they were it was on the border with China. That's because it was on the border they were more te- technology advanced. Look at them now. They're still using from the looks of one's, old weapons apart from... One's a communist dictatorship. The other is a uh, Western-style democracy. And an electrical and technical powerhouse in... I mean, Korea is Samsung. The f- one of the biggest phones my, in the world. My, my car is Korean. <laughs> I think exactly. we do need to um we, we need to cut off close we need to stop. Oh man, <laughs> this picture of them <laughs> in the in the woods. You know what I saw? No, there's this one of them in the snow. Oh, well, they're doing the uh, the crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're doing the training in the snow. Mate. Right. Well, that turns up at your door. <laughs> We're going to close it off for the day. We went over a little bit, but we was kind of getting into it, so it's always good. But we will be back next week at the same time. Hopefully, Ollie will be with us next time. We're going to check on him and make sure everything's all okay with him. But if not, it'll be another Weeb and be, Monkey stream. Weeb, Weeb and Monkey special. But if you want to send us some memes, shit posts, uh, weapon pictures, or armed forces interesting shit, tweet us at Context Needed One. And if you want to send us a formal kind of correspondence, send us an email, contextneededuk at gmail.com. We will send you all the details of how to get the formal correspondence over to us, but beware, it involves being written by an old-style typewriter. You must smoke at the same time to get the aroma of the smoke. You've, you've got to smoke at least a packet Whilst writing. <laughs> it's at least a packet or a high-grade cigar. Yes, it's very high-grade cigar. <laughs> and, and if we'll it's not have... a high-grade cigar, we'll send it back and tell you to do it with a carton of cigarettes. <laughs> we will also write in red pen like a teacher does mistakes. <laughs> if you Wait, if you are going to send me uh, send us links to videos of military stuff, do not send me any of the cool stuff that used to be done by um, War Aesthetics. I've already seen them all. I already <laughs> love them all. I don't need to see them again. You, you always need to see them again. But Mate, anyway, they are so good. With, with that, we'll do a quick plug of our own shit. So I'm on Twitter with IKT Oasis, and I stream here Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, currently going through the Ratchet Games. Ryan, do you want to plug your shit? Uh, Corrupt Aesthetic. Corrupt underscore aesthetic on Instagram. Please, please go there and like all my photos because not enough people like them. <laughs> uh, and that's, I, I've got a Twitter, which is just corrupt. Is it corrupt media now? What did I change it to? I don't know. What have you changed it to? Let's have a look. Uh, I think, oh, it's corrupt photo. Yes, is the at, at, it's at, at corrupt, corrupt photo. photo. But my display name is uh, corrupt aesthetic. Yep. Or, or underscore if I take. And with that, like we said, we'll be back next week, same time, same place. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you guys later. Bye.